Hi, Joey Fulgione here, the Clever Catholic, also at clevercatholic.com if you want to read these essays. Uh, today's discussion is that life and its evolution prove God. Life and its evolution prove God. Here's one line from a poem by Stephen Crane, who's also the author of The Red Badge of Courage. A man said to the universe, Sir, I exist. However, replied the universe, the fact has not created in me a sense of obligation. Some think that to believe in evolution is to deny God. Nothing could be further from the truth. Life and its evolution affirm God's existence. Charles Darwin boarded at the Anglican Shrewsbury School and graduated from Christ College, Cambridge. Darwin certainly knew Genesis, which is fairly accurate in its sequence. First the stars, let there be light, then the sun, night and day, next is the ocean and land, vegetation follows, the first creatures begin in the sea, later the land animals emerge, and finally humans appear. How ironic it would be if Darwin came up with his theory because of Genesis. And that's Genesis 1, 3 through 26. Amazingly, 3.7 billion years ago, non-living matter began to organize itself into life. These simple forms of life, one-celled creatures, then evolved into more and more complex multicellular forms, resulting in the staggering diversification of life found today. The problem is that the universe on its own cannot make life from non-living matter and then take that life and make it evolve. Some find it difficult to reconcile their faith with evolution, but not St. Pope John Paul II. And I quote, The theory of evolution is more than a hypothesis. The convergence of results in scientific work conducted independently is in itself a significant argument in favor of this theory. And you can see these, uh, you can see these citations on the website clevercatholic.com. What's the difference how we got here? Christ still came. There is too much evidence not to believe in evolution. How can one explain away the dinosaur room in the Museum of Natural History? We have to be open to the truth wherever it leads. Evolution is common sense. For example, the reason many pesticides eventually fail is because the few surviving bugs obviously have some genetic resistance. Their offspring will likewise be resistant. Thus, a change in the environment, the pesticide, altered the species. Over billions of years, big changes can happen. Evolution, though, depends on God. The reason that life and its evolution could not happen without God's intervention is the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics. Don't be bothered by the term. It's a simple concept. The second law of thermodynamics explains what happens to a book, a car, or even your body over time. They fall apart. Any college chemistry text states this law. The entropy or disorder of the universe is constantly increasing. Entropy is the measure of randomness of a system. The direction of all natural events is toward disorder. Every spontaneous chemical and physical change increases the total entropy of the universe. By itself, the universe breaks down order into disorder. It never builds things up. We instinctively know this, although we may not realize it. Basically, as Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest astrophysicists of our time, said, Entropy is a form of Murphy's Law. Things always tend to go wrong. For example, a vase on a stand is in a higher state of order than if it falls to the floor and breaks. Anyone can tell you which vase was before and which one was after. People have seen a vase fall and break, but no one has ever seen a broken vase 
put itself together and go back on a stand, except when a movie is reversed. The broken vase is now at a lower energy level with less potential energy and less order. One day the universe will run down because all its energy will be in the lowest form. Since the direction of all natural events is toward disorder, entropy is sometimes referred to as time's arrow. As time goes forward, disorder increases. Based on entropy, it's easy to figure out before and after to every natural and spontaneous event. Opening the door to an air-conditioned room shows the universe decreases order. Having cold air in a closed room and hot air outside is order. The difference in concentration between the two air masses is a concentration gradient. When the door is opened, however, the universe takes over. Hot air comes in, cold air goes out, and disorder increases until the temperature is uniform. When a balloon pops, the entropy of the universe increases. In an air-filled balloon, the molecules of air have a certain degree of water because they are close together. Their movement is limited by the balloon. After the balloon pops, though, the air molecules expand into the atmosphere with much more random, disordered movement. They aren't able to stay together. Since the universe is always increasing disorder, how could life, which is the epitome of order, begin unless someone independent of the universe brought it about? And how could life then evolve into more diverse and complex forms without divine intervention? Life's progression has been a continual increase in order, yet the universe can only make disorder increase. In previous examples, after always meant less order than before. That's not the case, however, with life and its evolution. Scientifically speaking, one is compelled to believe in God. By itself, the universe is obviously not capable of making life come from non-living matter and then taking that life and making it more diversified and complex. In other words, life and its magnificent, breathtaking evolution could not happen without God. The spurious argument made against this reasoning is that although the total disorder of the universe is increasing, there may be pockets or islands where there is an increase in order, such as life on Earth, for example. The mistake here is that entropy is a uniform phenomenon affecting all areas at all times which would not allow the steady 3.7 billion year progression of life from simple to complex, disorder to order. Remember the textbook statement, the direction of all natural events is toward disorder. Life is a supernatural event. Entropy is not selective, allowing some parts of the universe to be affected by it and other parts not to be. It would be the same as a balloon bursting and all the air molecules staying together and becoming more concentrated. Imagine how unlikely it is for an apple to jump up from the ground to a tree. Consider the improbability of food coloring staying completely together and intact in water. Think of how incredibly odd it would be if an air-conditioned room with its door opened kept the same concentration gradient as if the door were closed, with cold air on one side and hot air on the other. These events are too unlikely. Yet that's what life continually does in combating entropy by increasing order. Hence, life and its evolution could not happen on its own. God is responsible. God overcomes entropy. Because we're alive proves God exists. Our bodies are constantly battling entropy. The universe abhors life's order. We are under continuous assault in countless ways by the environment. At every moment, the universe is trying to destroy us. We usually do not realize it because our bodies are doing such a good f job of putting up a fight. Gravity is pulling our blood down while our hearts are pumping it up. The outside temperature tries to change our steady internal temperature. The universe 
tries to break up our highly ordered bodies into randomness, the same way food coloring dissolves in water. Our bodies fiercely fight back, attempting to remain intact with a controlled internal environment, also known as homeostasis. One day, though, the universe will win the battle, turning us back into dust, the original elements we're composed of. When you die, the entropy of the universe will have increased, for the universe brought your highly ordered living body to a halt and began breaking it down into its disordered components. There is just one problem. There should not even be a battle. The indifferent universe cannot simultaneously maintain you and destroy you. It can do only one all the time. While the cold, mindless universe is trying its best to annihilate us at every moment, the average person is making two to three million red blood cells per second, or 200 billion red blood cells per day, and breaking down 200 billion. To describe all the actions your body does to maintain order, using the nervous, cardiovascular, respiratory, immune, urinary, muscular, skeletal, digestive, and other complex systems requires a thick physiology text. A doctor, for instance, can only clean, apply ointment, and bandage a wound. God heals it. The cold, callous universe is of no help. One human cell one human cell's DNA, for example, contains a code that's comprised of six billion units unique to that person. All the information needed to make that person is in their DNA, far, far more complicated than any computer code. The degree of order in a living being is astonishing. That's the miracle of life. Without intelligence, all the parts of the body are working purposely a purple purposefully together to maintain homeostasis. The universe, however, cannot perform the complex processes that take place in the human body to overcome entropy while attempting at the same time to destroy those processes by entropy. The universe cannot be on both sides. The universe can only do one thing, increase disorder. The universe is consistent. The mindless universe has no choice in the matter. The only explanation is that God creates life, sustains life, and guides its evolution. God is the intelligence that enables life to overcome entropy which, with such vigor in every generation. Praise God.